Prepare yourself guys, Bungie has just released a motherload of old tabs and in today's video I'm going to be tackling this beat. Before I start don't forget to leave a like and a sub so right out the way let's begin. In this tab we got weapon tuning, we got bike dust changes and seasonal challenges. So let's do seasonal challenges first because some of you all are going to be really mad at the changes they have done. Seasonal challenges and how did it work? So for every week of a new season for 10 weeks Bungie will introduce new challenges of varying difficulties and requirements. These include seasonal content, gambit, crucible and vanguard strikes. I like other seasons where you can attempt the weekly challenges once per character. Now you can do it three times if you only have one character. Now most of the player base do have maybe three or two characters but there are still a majority of them who only have one. Unfortunately like me, I have all three. I have a hunter, a warlock and a titan. But I am still a titan main. So every um, week, the start of the week of Tuesday for Destiny, I always play my titan so I do the raid first my titan and then I do my hunter and then the warlock. So what what does this mean? So you can attempt week one challenge in week seven if you missed out. So this is this FOMO, which is the fear of missing out. So all of these will reward XP, possible bright dust, seasonal currency or other thing. Seasonal currency, what could that be? The seasonal currency in season of the hunt, current season, or these digital bags or these two notepads or whatever you want to call them which you hand into the hand into the crow and it can sort of increase your reputation. Now that what it means by seasonal currency. Most of the challenges focus on ritual activities, strikes, crucible, gambit can still be done without the season pass. Around about 60% of the season challenges will not require the season pass. So if you have a season pass you will obviously have access to the whole 100% but don't you have 60% which is still better than nothing. As a result, weekly parties from three main vendors being Lord Shacks, Zavala and our favourite um, Vanguard Guardian at all time, the Drifter, Banshee and the seasonal vendors will be removed. So these weekly bounties will be, I don't know, for Vanguard strike. Please do free Vanguard strike with 100 kill with an X weapon or with Lord Shax play um, this amount of maps or play this amount of rounds. They will still have the daily bounties and the three main ones will still have repeatable bounties so you can still hold bounties if you want to for the next season. And as a result you can still grind bright dust and gain extra XP. Any challenges that reward unique or seasonal item currency Low books or seasonal weapons can be completed as long as said activity is still in the game. But XP's will be only given in the current season. So if you complete season 13 uh, activities and laws and bounties in that season, you will get XP. However, when you move into season 14 and you try to complete season 13 stuff or don't collect it until season 14, you won't be rewarded with XP. So there is no point, so you may as well just claim it in that season. Next up is Bright Dust Changes, everybody's favourite currency. Bungie has mentioned they wanted to make earning Bright Dust more account centric, instead of oh, how many games of Gambit do I need to play for 100 Bright Dust. And I'm saying this, I'm specifically targeting Gambit because Gambit is not everybody's favourite game mode. Bright Dust will add seasonal challenges that are based on strikes. Crucible or Gambit, you will be earn you be able to earn between 75 to 300 depending on the challenge. Oh, don't worry though. The only challenge that will get bright dust are the ones that can be completed by both free and seasonal players. So now seasonal players who don't own a season pass don't have to complain as much. Also, if you complete nearly all the season challenges, you can get 4,000 bright dust. However, each ritual vendor challenges, aka the complete 8 bounties, is also going to give you 120 brightness for each character per week. So what does this mean? In one whole season, or the 3 months, you can earn a whopping 
34,540 Bactas per season, which is quite a lot. Plus, they will be still weekly and repeated with bounties that you can focus on Bactas with each seasonal event. Next up, Weapon Tuning. Let's prepare yourself. In preparation for crossplay, coming later this year, nice little budget to confirm that, we're going to make some recall changes. Currently, Master Keyboard play experience 40% less recall on certain archetype weapons, creating a situation where stability set does not exist and we don't need to farm for it, so the intent and purpose of it is no longer needed. The following archetypes are getting the recall change from 40% to 20%. These being auto rifles, scout rifles, post rifles, SNGs, hand cannons, and machine guns. But SNGs, post rifles, machine guns are getting some buffs. Which is that the camera movement from firing weapons are getting reduced from 24% for SNGs, 7% for post rifles, and 9.5% for machine guns. This is in response to recoil adjustments coming in. SNGs are largely outclassed by auto rifles who are good at long ranges and medium ranges, aside of who are masters at short ranges, thus making SMG feel a bit better to fire and maybe more viable. Well, I can imagine those player bases are going to have a full troop with this one, especially on Twitter. How about some good news? Buffs, rocket launchers that are getting a whopping 30% damage increase. With it, every single exotic rocket launcher in the game are being tuned differently, so not so one rocket launcher is not powerful, more powerful than the others. So I can't wait to see what they're doing, gonna do with either tomorrow. However, rocket launchers haven't been in the meta since the start of D2 and in between D1. However, the either tomorrow is currently being used in Gambit since it's completely broken with the tracking. So it's basically Galavorn but a bit less famous. Fusion rifles. Bungie has decided to increase the fall of damage based on your range stat. So if you have zero range stat, it's 6%. And if it's 16%, it's fall of damage is 100 range. So basically, fusion rifles are going to do more damage further away you are. Also, the camera movement. The camera movement is being reduced by 10% to make it easier for you to aim. Grenade launchers. It's not the heavy one, it's the special ammo ones. The hold the arm release function is being discarded. So instead of you having to hold the trigger down and let go when it's near the enemy, now it will auto detonate when it reaches a character. And now back to nerfs. Increase ADS flints to snipers when you're taking damage from other players. This is because it's now hard to challenge someone with a sniper if you get the first shot on the enemy and then they can return and win the gunfight. Now this is especially a problem with PC. Because you could be aiming down sight with someone and hit them once with a sniper rifle. They could easily turn around quite fast and headshot you. Now swords. Swords are getting another de debuff with a 15% damage. Now I don't really think I need to explain this one since 65% of the player base use swords for major of the gameplay encounters. This being a tracks. As a, as a Rathbone Hunt, you know you've got the Fallen Killing Team which is the best sword in the game. Which is second place now because we've got an exotic sword. The Heartbringer I think it's called. Yeah, the, the Heartbringer. Not a Heartbringer, sorry. The Lament. The Lament. The Lament is an exotic sword which allows you to block and increase your damage as well as heals you while you're using it. Yes, for a buff of rocket launcher, but also have you seen how damaging swords are? Bug fixes and changes. These are good. Hawk Moon, Ace, and Terrible currently have an issue where they will lose a bonus if you take out your goal cell. So, no, no, no longer you really lose the exotic traits when you're building up. Borealis and Hololight now have a short animation for switching their damage attack. Duality. Duality is the shotgun from the season parts of, today, uh, of Season of the Hunt. It seems like it's more of a buff than a fix to me, but they say increased damage fall off by 1.25 meters in both hip fire and aim, and they reduce the max stack of buff from 75. But each buff is ha is increased by having a higher damage bonus. So in other words, instead of needing seven, you only need five. Stern will once again reload any equipped special slot on kill, providing it either has reserve or if it's not full already. Merciless. The Merciless is getting fixed. 
its charge rate will now hopefully properly increase non-lethal kill hit. AKA this is how the gun is meant to work. Finally, Crimson Day. Crimson Day is the Valentine event that happens every February. However, this time Crimson doubles and the event is getting thrown in the DC review. Bungie themselves feels that the event is not up to snuff. There was but mine. And it's going away. But this should hopefully allow Bungie more time to focus on good content on the game instead of having to focus on content that is spread out evenly. Now that is the end of the video, so I hope you guys enjoyed that. Till next time, bye.